Hey everyone, this is Yosef Vedesta, 52 Frames, our weekly photography project available on 52frames.com. As you all have heard, big news in the photography world, the Google Nick collection is now free of charge. Uh, I actually use the Nick collection software on every single edit that I care about. Uh, even if it's just minor tweaks, it is an amazing tool and I just wanted to give you guys a very quick breakdown uh, slash tutorial of how to use it. I definitely recommend you go and you download it for that very low price of free. Here's a photo that I took uh, last year, which was for week number two. The challenge was silhouette. I do not condone smoking and I had to chain smoke like five cigarettes for this. My apartment stank for a week, uh, but I think it's a cool shot. Anyways, I'm gonna show you the workflow in Photoshop, and I believe it is pretty much identical in Lightroom. So in Photoshop, once you have it installed, you will now see a new panel. I'll move it over into this monitor. And this is the entire collection. I tend to use the uh, Color Effects Pro, um, but Silver Effects Pro is absolutely phenomenal. And this Sharpener Pro is also really great effect. It's a very powerful tool. So I'm just gonna go and click here on Color Effects Pro. And you'll see right away, Photoshop creates a new layer and it brings in your image into this new window. Now this is what the workspace looks like and you see it auto loaded this uh, effect here. So I'm going to remove this filter from the stack. And the reason it's a stack is because you can actually load multiple filters on top of one another. I'll show you that in a bit. And the one that I use my go to filter here is what's called tonal contrast. And what's so cool about the tonal contrast Unlike the clarity slider, which perhaps you're familiar with in Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw and the like, what clarity does is it boosts the contrast in the midtones. So what's so cool about this tonal contrast is that you have the control on the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. What I do first is I'm just going to zero out these percentages. So I'm working with my original image and then I'll move each slider back and forth to see what it's doing. So the highlight, we see the only pure highlights are right here in the center spot. As with anything, I like to find a place that I think it looks like there's an improvement and then scale it back. So now we'll amp the midtones a bit and you'll see this will give you a very similar effect to the clarity slider. And now we move our shadows and here you really see where the program is providing something unique. Uh, it's such a powerful tool. Um, and then I'll go to saturation. I also find that it saturates beautifully. I know this is just one slider in a filter called contrast, but this saturation slider to my eye works better than any saturation slider in anywhere in other Adobe products. So sometimes I even come in here just to saturate my image. Um, what's very cool is that you can also add some control points. So I'll just hit on this plus sign here and you can create where you want the effect to be in the frame and you can also lower the opacity. Um, this will toggle here uh, on and off and you can create multiple control points on your image. And after that, you can also save this as a recipe. Once you save it as a recipe, you're, you'll see in here uh, you'll have this recipe tab and you'll be able to click on that and it'll open up into this uh, workspace right into your previously saved settings. Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a filter to this. I'm going to add what's called pro contrast, but if I just click, it will replace the filter that I have here already. So you have to go here and click on the add filter button that creates an empty filter on the stack. And then we click on pro contrast. And again, you just play with the slider, see what this does. I find this really levels off the color cast in the image. Correct contrast gives you a bit more of a, of a, a, a boost in contrast, but really go easy on that slider. And this dynamic contrast will cheat HDR. 
uh, in my opinion, it, it really, with just a, a nudge of this slider, uh, will vastly change the dynamic of your image. And a lot of people ask me like, oh, is this uh, an HDR image? And I'm like, nah, it's just dynamic contrast and pro contrast filter and the color effects. No big deal. <laughs> um, really powerful, powerful stuff. Again, you can add your control points to really control what you want to do. But I mean, what I like to do is bring it back into Photoshop. You hit OK, it flattens out the image for you, and it brings it into this layer that it created already. And the important thing to do is then to add the layer mask to it. And what I could even do if I hold the Alter option, add a black layer mask to it, and then I can just paint in white where I want the effect to be. So I can maybe make it stronger in the, in the center here, and maybe I don't want it on here on my on my uh, subject here, and then maybe I'll make a uh, you know 40% opacity for the for the outward it gives it a little bit of that three dimensional effect. Very cool, very quick. You could see the difference before and after. Just did that very quickly, um, and it's pretty much the same for all these other ones. We'll go ahead in and check out the Silver Effects Pro which is a very cool dialogue to get your photos into black and white. And I mean, look, these are similar to, you know, Lightroom presets, actions. You can use these as is out of the box, or you can take it, scale it down, mix and match, use it as but one of many tools in your Photoshop experience. Um, but you can see really, really cool and dynamic uh, effects that it can do, and then over here, you can change different qualities of the images, and you can go here and add, they have different film types, where it'll emulate the type of look and grain from these specific old school films, which is so cool. Uh, you can also add some film grain to it, and finally you can add some like really cool finishing effects. All right, guys, I hope this was a good intro for you for the Google Nick collection. I highly recommend you download it. I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer that they're just giving it away. Uh, some people say that they're concerned now for the uh, future development work from Google, being that they're not uh, making profit from it anymore. So we'll have to see about that. In the meantime, even if this stays as is for the foreseeable future, it's amazing tools to have. I definitely recommend you guys experiment with it and have fun. All right, guys, as always, you can follow us at 52frames.com to follow our amazing 52 week photography challenge project. In the meantime, happy shooting. Thank you.